come back to the Father. He'll rest out and throw his arms around you. It's that easy, huh? It's that easy. You want to pray? I do. What's your name, man? Aaron. Aaron? Just say, Lord, Lord, forgive me a sinner. Forgive me a sinner. He loves you today. It's a love story for God to love the world. Uh, I can. It's legal. I got. I got the sound ordinance right here, officer. Okay. Um. We did get one complaint on you, but yeah. as far as I'm concerned, we need more people like you doing this. So. Yeah. You gotta be willing to come like a little child. Come just as you are. Come just as you are. To God, He loves you so much. He sent His only Son to suffer and die on Calvary's cross for you and for me. Jesus was beaten and bruised and nailed to a wooden cross. How you doing, sir? Good, brother. I want to hear what you're talking about. Huh? I'm talking about Jesus. I know, that's why I can't yeah. You know what He came to offer you? Yeah. What did he come to offer you? Eternal life. What does that mean exactly? It means? Yeah. It means that uh, his mercy and grace was shed on this earth. Yeah. For me and for you. That's right. So I can spend eternity in heaven with him. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. But then he said, whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. You ever go to the gym? The gym? Yeah. Nah. You don't work out? You ever work jog? Do huh? you, you exercise at all? I mean, I, I work in a factory that's a million square feet. Okay. Well, I, there's a lot of people, they, they, they're, they're doing all these things to try to extend their life, try to make their life last longer, and, and uh, nah. it's kind of a, a it, you know, it might give them a, a year or two, huh? but, but uh, Jesus came to give you eternal life. And I'll put that life more abundantly. You know what else he, he, he's offering? He said, in my father's house, there are many rooms. Many mansions. Many mansions, many rooms. Yeah. And, the, and in Revelation, it says that the streets are paved with gold. It, says, it talks about a futuristic city that we will dwell in. It's not going to be a bunch of angels flying around on, playing harps on clouds. It's not going to be nothing weird like that. We're literally going to live in a in a futuristic celestial city, and 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 Hebrews four says that we will be able to come boldly into His presence. You can actually do that now. You can do that now if you go through the blood of Christ and become Lord. He becomes Lord of your life. Is He Lord of your life? Yes, He is. Amen, brother. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to let you get back to it. All right, what's your name? I'm Isaac. Isaac? Yeah. God bless you, Isaac. God bless you, brother. There's life in this Jesus. I'm not, talk, I'm not out here trying to peddle some religiosity. I'm not trying to t tell you about you got to go to some building with, with steeples and bells. I'm not telling you you got to... You gotta, Sing the doxology or pray the rosary and make the sign of the cross. I'm not here to, to, to tell you you got to light some candles and you got to be sprinkled with water. 
you got to be dipped or dunked. All right, we can't measure up. We can't do, we can't be good enough. We can't earn our way. We're just going to fail. We're going to, we're going to, we can't help sometimes, but stretch the truth or exaggerate or lie. We can't help but sometimes uh, steal from, from uh, somebody, take, take time off that you got paid for to, to, to do whatever you want to do. And you know that's stealing in your heart. We, we do these things because it's in our, in our nature. We, we can't not do it without Jesus being in our heart, without Jesus being in our life. But He comes to cover over all that. He comes to, to wash it all away. What can wash away all your sin? Nothing but the blood. Praise Jesus. The blood of Jesus. He didn't come to establish steeples and bells. He didn't come to establish religiosity, churchianity. He said, I come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life is available today in Jesus. Oh, why don't you look to Jesus and have life? Don't you know there's hope in the cross today? It's not in religion. It's not in religiosity or churchianity. There's hope in Jesus. You're not going to find it in, in luxury cars, sir. Uh, one scratch, one ding, and it ruined the whole, the whole game for you. Oh, I'm here today to tell you, when you store your treasures in heaven, where moth doesn't, doesn't corrupt it, where thieves can't break in and steal it, you'll have true treasures. Jesus didn't, didn't tell us, you know, that God's against us having money, but, but we all, He is against money having us. He's against uh, uh, money being our God and our possessions being our God before him that's what he told the rich young ruler that came to him he said master what must i do to be saved he said well you know the law what's what's it read it says don't lie don't steal don't commit a, a, adultery don't commit murder uh obey your parents honor your parents he said i kept all these things from my youth and jesus put his finger right on that man's God and he said, go and sell everything that you have and give to the poor. And he said, then come and follow me. The man went away sorrowful because his money was his God. And it's not that you can't be wealthy, but you have to be rich towards God. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you just open the door and let Jesus come in? It's a life-changing experience. That's right, I'm here to tell you about this amazing God who sent His only Son to suffer and die on Calvary's cross for you, sir. Who are you talking about? Jesus. Jesus. You know Jesus? I love Jesus. You gotta know Him. Do you know Him? A little bit. A little, little bit. bit. Yeah. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. Have, Have you been, been born, born again? I can say I've been born again, but I fell back to my old ways. Yeah, that's all right. You can you can just slide on back. If you, you your backslider, slide on back. Is it really that easy? It is. Yeah. Hebrews uh, Hebrews chapter twelve says, "Seeing uh, seeing we're encamped about by uh, such a great a cloud of witnesses," he said. Just lay aside every sin and weight that so easily besets you. Run and, and get back up and run with diligence the race that's set before you. And and you know, we we get ensnared by the, the cares of this world and 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 the things of this world. Yeah. They, they the devil's trying always to to pull us off track. And, um, with everything. With the eyes. Yeah. He pulls the far track with the eyes. But Jesus told us the story of the prodigal son for a reason. Do you, do you remember that story? I do. Yeah. I and do. The, the father will rush out to meet you right where you are, man. If you just turn around and say, I'm tired of the pig slot. I'm coming back. I'm going to come back to the father. He'll rush out and throw his arms around you. It's that easy, huh? It's that easy. You want to pray? I do.
What's your name, man? Aaron. Aaron? Just say, Lord. Lord. Forgive me, a sinner. Forgive me, a sinner. I backslid on you. I backslid on you. Help me to slide right back. Help me to slide right back. Help me to make a decision to follow you. Help me to make a decision to follow you. From this moment on. From this moment on. And to keep my eyes focused on the cross. To keep my eyes focused on the cross. Not on me. Not on me. Not on what I do. Not on what I do. But what you already did. But what you already did. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. That's not a magic prayer, okay? There's no magic prayer. It's it's a, just a point of contact. It's a moment where you make a decision. From this moment on, I'm gonna I'm gonna focus my eyes on the cross. And it's not about a bunch of religious rules, do's and don'ts. You know, the Holy Spirit. Have you have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is right there with you. He never left you. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And, and he, he's right there. He'll guide you. And the, the most important thing is to get in his word and let his word get in you, get in, you know. And now, if I was to get in his word, what would be your advice on direction? What, what, what would be your verse to give me? I, I would just... I would just uh, start out in the New Testament. You New know? Testament. Yeah, I start working my way, you know, through the whole New Testament, and then get that down. Maybe go through it twice, you know, and and get it down. Been through and, it a couple times. Yeah, couple and, times. But it, 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 that, it's called the Living Word for a reason because it, that word will activate inside you. You know what I deal with? What's that? Us. Yeah, everybody does. <laughs> but you know what? That's why he said just lay it aside, get back up, and keep running. And that's how, how easy it is. Just just recognize that, yeah, I stumbled there. Lord, forgive me. I'm going to get back up. I'm just going to keep running the race. And uh, that's what the cross is for. Is to, you know, the blood that was shed there keeps on cleansing, keeps on washing, making you, you righteous in his sight, Aaron. And he, he won't. He won't let you down. I know he won't. And, the, and this word. I, 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 I got I to play my part. I got to do my part. You know, he doesn't do everything for us. Yeah. And I know I got to do my part for him to, to work in my life. Yeah. I just got to be courageous enough to do so. Yeah. Amen. I appreciate you praying for me. Yeah. I really do. And now, nowadays with all the modern technology, you can just... Just go to YouTube and type in, you know, uh, the Bible, Word of Promise. Yeah, and, sometimes and that modern technology dumb you down, you know. <laughs> so, but, but I'm just saying you can you can actually listen to the Word while you're driving. Why, you know, I don't know what kind of work you do or you it's know asphalt. Oh, uh, but it's to, the point, it's to the point like nobody has an excuse. Yeah, it, you know what I mean. And I don't have no excuse. Yeah, I, I don't. I know that. You know, yeah. Judgment Day. When Judgment Day comes, like I have no excuse. He says it's, it's better, it's better for you to not know me than to know me and turn from me. Yeah. You know. I know him. Yeah. And I've turned from him. I don't want to be the ones that's damned. You know what I mean? But he just threw his arms around you right now, Aaron. He's throwing his arms around you, shouting, "My son, which was dead, is alive again." <laughs> I thank you, brother. Uh, God bless you. God bless you, brother. Have a good night out here. All right, right. you too. The Bible does say that money is answerable to all things in life, but it's not the answer. The answer in life is, is a relationship with Jesus Christ so that we can become one again with our Father who is love. We all want love. We all want to experience it. We all want to have it flowing through us. We want to give love to people. We want to feel love. You know, that's why we, we, we're out here... Even some of us are out here looking for a relationship. They want to feel and give and exchange love. Well, the key the key to that is obviously to, to love your neighbor or your the person before you as you love yourself. But I tell you what, God who created us, He is love. And the word actually comes from His name. His name is love. That's, that's our Father. He, he took that name upon Himself. 
There's this thing called sin and falling short. Okay, we all have fallen short from the standard of perfection of God, okay? All you all out there, you're looking for love. Don't look in the wrong places. Look to Jesus. Let our boast be in Jesus. He's the access to love. We love because God first loved us. All nationalities. He, God first loved us. That's why we're able to love. The, a religion, which is of Satan, says you love when you do the right do's and don'ts all the time. you got to do it almost perfectly. You keep all these rules and then you don't do these, but you do these. And if you keep doing that, you'll earn, you'll earn love. Well, when do you stop? You just, every day you feel like there's more and more and, and you just get worn out and you finally just give up on love. You give up. Because it'll wear you out. Religion will wear you out. You'll give up on love. And then you'll go just, you'll think that, that uh, you'll, religion will make you hate Jesus. True religion won't, but religion itself is a bunch of rules, not a relationship. That's why everybody's down here. You guys are down here for a relationship. You're looking for a relationship. So is God. So is Jesus. He's looking to live in your heart. Ask Him in. He won't force His way in. There is, a, there is a thing called Satan, and He's out here to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has the authority over Him. You walk in the power in the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will say, don't go that way. Go this way. No, don't go to your car yet. No. No, don't, don't pick that guy. Don't go with that guy. Don't go to his apartment. No, don't do it. That's what the Holy Ghost, he's in your heart, he's speaking. Be careful, ladies, in Jesus' name. So, I'm asking you to ask Jesus tonight to reveal himself to you. Ask him to call you in your spirit and, and to speak to you on your bed tonight. Ask him. It's his responsibility to reveal himself to you. You have a choice to ask, but then it's on him. He must show himself to you. You'll, you'll start to see, that didn't happen just by coincidence. That's my, he's answering my question. That, that's, that's more than paranormal. That's more than coincidence. That's exactly what I asked. I asked Jesus to reveal himself to me. And he's answering my prayer. And then he says, will you let me in your heart? Let me in. I was created to live in your heart.